Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad to be in it. Isn't it wonderful, saints, that the, the Lord, our Heavenly Father, is so in charge. These are glory days. Come on, say it with me. Say it with me, saints. These are glory days. Those that are there on Facebook right now, Twitter, uh, uh, Rumble, those that are watching us on YouTube, God bless you, each and every one of you around the United States and different parts of the world. May the Lord bless you. Come on, receive it right now. May the Lord bless you and keep you. These are awesome days, awesome historic days that we are living in, saints. Come on, come on. I hope you got your glory day hat. Please, on. Hope you got your glory day hats, because I got mine. Saints, uh, so many testimonies of those that are sleeping with their hats. We get testimonies. But I want you to receive it, saints. We're going to bless you. We want to bless you. I'm going to bring, you know, a really dear uh, a friend of mine. I consider him a friend. And I had a chance. Uh, you know what? It's not wasn't a chance. It was an opportunity because God doesn't do um, accidents. We were on the same flight going to Texas. And so I had a chance. And I know that I know that Charles was a little tired. <laughs> I knew, but I said, you know what? It's like now or never. <laughs> he's flying everywhere. And he's he used to be a part of Kim Clement's band. He, I, I think he was the lead guitar player. But I knew it was now or never. And then, you know, so I had to tell my wife, tell my wife, I got to get to that seat because if I do not pick his brain, I'm not going to have this time. <laughs> but God gave me an opportunity. And I'm telling you, uh, the things that I've learned about Kim Kamen, I had no idea that none of this was on any video. None of this. These were all personal prophecies. And uh, um, and that I'm going to allow uh, Charles to uh, explain that if he wants to do it. But I'm just telling you something. We are such in glorious times. It's just confirmation on things that you and I uh, have been talking about or what the Lord has been downloading. And we got to be careful not to get too emotional about what we see on the news. Because they think they got it. They think they're in control. But man, no. We've been having historic weather. We've been having historic political challenges in the world and in our nation. But things are in, I, I want to just use the word, the tide is turning. Uh, this morning I was on Glory, His Glory TV. And the Lord was showing me. That the tides, the tides are turning. And this was early, early, early this morning. So, but we have things to tell you. And I want to actually explain something. I don't really need to because it's already self-explainable. But many times the scripture says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And when knowledge is given, they refuse it. So saints, we have to understand God has not changed his mind on you. And on this nation, I'm going to say it again. God has not changed his mind on you and on this nation. This nation is coming back to the Lord. This nation is coming back. The tides are turning. This was so, so, so strong this morning. The tides was turning. This was not the word that I was going to speak on his glory TV. The Lord just shifted and said, let my people know the tides are turning. Powerful. Whoa. And I received that. But not just in the political. Also, you and me, the biblical platform. So glory to God. Now, saints, I always have you put it out there. What's today's day? Because I want you to hear it. And I'm going to bring my dear friend up. I'm going to bring my dear friend. Yes. So what's today's day? Come on, me. Come on, bring it up there, saints. Bring it up there. Today's day, and I'm hoping that you are having a blessed week in the Lord. And one of the things that I had needed to ask you: Who out there is from Florida? And I'm going to bring my friend up right now. 
Hallelujah. Hello, Brother Jordan. Come on up there and join us. Let me see if I can get him up. Come on up there and join us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There he goes. Hello. My friend. <laughs> How you doing? You're doing good. Hallelujah. I don't know. Did you hear me back there in the backstage? Yeah. Oh, great. Oh, good, good, good. Man, look at his place. You know, against me, that is Texas, man. You know, um, that, I thank God for you. I was telling the saints how I had a really, it was an opportunity for me. And I was not going to let that thing go by. So I said, Chief, we, I got to sit here next to Charles because I need to, it's just when the opportunity is there, you just want to take it. Hey, hey, you know, the feeling is mutual. You know, I was the same way. You know, I mean, you're a general in the kingdom, my friend. And so uh, you, you, we, we, we have to learn that the one thing I love about people like you, people like Ren, you know, and, and the company that we were with, you know, we're all humble. We all know that we can learn from each other. That's what That's I love right. about this group. And so, hey, I'm the same way, my brother. I was so honored to be able to sit next to you and just to be able to fellowship and just glean off of you, man. So the feeling is mutual, my friend. Amen. Amen. You know, the, you know what you do. I'll tell you, uh, Brother Charles called me a general in the faith, you know, and I, and you know, that's a humbling experience. But you, you are also an upcoming general in the way God uses you. And you also was set in fellowship with a general who is now with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's interesting. We have learned more about Kim Clement. You know, I don't like to say it that way, but this is just, that's the only way to say it. Since his passing, you know, since his transition from earth to heaven, we have learned more about Kim Command than we have learned since he's before he you know when he was on earth, mm -hmm. and the Lord had used him to minister. And you know, I want to make sure for those of you, are you familiar with Kim Clement? If you're not, um, we're going to bring his uh, we're going to bring his folder up there. If you are familiar. With well, let's do Kim this. Uh -huh. Let's do this. If if they're not familiar, just for a few minutes, let me share something with the audience. Okay, mm -hmm. that's one. That's that's one thing. That's great. That's him. But I want to share this. This is how Kim and I we operated. Uh, we we kind of played off each other. Kim was said to me, Doctor. He was said. He said, whenever Charlie strike a note on that bass guitar. It would make me prophesy. I would, I would hear from the Spirit of God. So I'm going to play about two, three minutes of this interaction between Kim and I and us okay. jamming. And I think you, I think your audience will get kind of a, an understanding of basically how we operated. Okay, so I'm going to send this over to you. Do you see it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going Great. to play it here. Ready? Bring it up, guys. Bring it up. Charlie, let's go. Woo! Charlie, prophesy, let's go.
you praising him. Come on. He saw you shouting the victory. He saw you praying till the demons fell. <laughs> Uh, that's just a little bit of what we used to do, my friend. That's wow. just a little bit of what we used to do. What was so beautiful about a lot of those moments is that those moments were birthed in the prophetic. They were birthed when either we were on the platform or whenever we would rehearse. Now, this is how Prophet Kim and I and the team would rehearse. We would come in. Kim said, be prayed up, be ready. We hit the platform and he would say, okay, let's see what God gives us today. And then we would begin to jam and then songs would come and then mm. we would arrange them. And then the next day we would present them on the broadcast. But what was so interesting about us that from, okay, so we were, uh, would rehearse on that Friday. We would come up with a song. God would give us a song and then we would arrange it. We would write words and everything. Okay, this is a great expression. This is what God has given us. And so we got everything memorized. We got everything worked out. And then we get in there on Saturday. And once we start the broadcast, all of a sudden, we will go in a different direction. It'll be the same song, but we would flow with a new flow. That's what I loved about the prophetic. And that's what I love about what we're doing today. Because, see, God is always advancing. He's never standing still. He's never standing stagnant. He is always moving forward. And that was the motto uh, of our ministry, man. It was so beautiful. I, I, I love that. And, you know, I actually listened. And as I was listening, Kim said, Charles prophesied. Mm -hmm. You know, so does, was he talking about you to literally prophesy, speak it up, or prophesy through the ministry, through the music? Yeah, he yeah he was telling me to prophesy on the bass. Matter of fact, the first time uh, I was in a Kim Clement meeting, uh, I was in 1993, and I was three years young in the Lord, and it, and that, it was the first prophetic word that I received from Prophet Kim Clement, and it really was the first prophetic word of the future, me stepping into my destiny. And uh, he said, the spirit of Elijah will rest upon you. Now, he said, the spirit of Elijah is resting upon you. Mm. He said, the spirit of Elijah is resting upon you. He said, you are a prophet. You will walk in the office of a prophet one day, but you will prophesy on the strings. And when he said that to me, I was like, what does that mean? Because I was young in the Lord. I had no idea what that meant because me, as far as prophecy at that time was, oh, someone has to say, thus saith the Lord, the Lord said. That was my understanding at that point. But then the more I traveled with this great prophet, the more I understood about prophecy. Because if you give that which is in your right hand, just like he asked Moses, God said to Moses, because Moses was dealing with a little bit of unbelief, a little bit of faithlessness. And God said to Moses, well, what is that in your right hand? It's just a stick. He said, no, let me show you what it is. You see, once you give God what it is that he has already gifted you with, what it is that in, you know, that's in your right hand, the right hand always speaks of power. Though you may be left-handed, the right hand spiritually speaks of power. Okay. And, 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 and so God said, what is that in your right hand? And he threw it down to the ground and he threw it on the ground and it became what God wanted it to become. And so whatever it is that God has gifted you with naturally, if he asks for it, now it's no longer natural. It has become supernatural. Supernatural is the oracle of God. And that's when I begin to understand that whenever I play on my bass guitar, when I and and I give it to God, no longer are just notes coming from my bass, but God's voice is beginning to come from that instrument, just like David when he played and uh, uh, um, you know played up on that harp, he was prophesying. And so yes, I it, it, you know I had that understanding in the beginning, but no, when he told me to prophesy, he was talking about prophesy on that bass because then he went into that next phrase that he started singing. And I didn't play the whole clip, but he went into a very powerful prophetic teaching, very powerful prophetic utterance. And so that's how we operated. Wow. I, I love that. 
Well, you know, I'm going to tell you something. There's a word the Lord gave me, but I'm going to save it for later. Don't forget. Oh, I'm not, I won't forget. <laughs> okay. Last, okay, not too long ago, a few, a handful of days ago, we last week, we heard, and what I did was, um, I was on Elijah's stream, and we had pre-recorded because we're doing a, they're doing a lot of pre-recording the day ahead or a few days ahead. Yeah, I know. On Elijah's stream, and I want to make sure that the saints can you guys hear us? Can you guys hear us? Because I'm going to release this word. It was, you know, for everyone that didn't know. So when we we recorded, uh, uh, we did a pre-recorded 24 hours on Elijah stream mm -hmm. prior to it airing. Okay. So at that time, uh, Donald Trump had not, you know, had not went in yet. I, what was it, Georgia he was supposed to go to or something yes. like that? Mm -hmm. yeah. He had not, he hadn't got there yet. It was supposed to happen like, uh, it was like, uh maybe 13 15 hours away and i was asked you know by kelsey in so many words what do you think is going to happen and i and i actually told kelsey what the lord has shown me so you know you'll get you wow well, you was that me oh okay. <laughs> so um I told Kelsey what the Lord has showed me. This was, I said, no jail, no bars. Right. Indictments, trials, no bars. It was the same prophecy that the Lord gave me prior, a few live streams, that my servant will not be behind bars. Behind wow. bars. And this is important because that's what, you know, the negatives were looking for, to try to put uh, Donald Trump behind bars. That didn't happen. It, uh, so, and a lot of times we don't understand what it means to be indictment. Many people are calling indictment all arrest but have you checked out the lawyers on that and it's extremely it's extremely important because many times we immediately can assume something and we're not sure about it but i'm you know god is great on this the the, the lord is just so my god with uh, with what the lord does on things and i'm going to give a little bit of a sample and so people can see this. Uh, this they could they should be. Let's see if we can see this on this. Okay, this is on tracking. There it is. There it is. An arrest is taking someone into custody. An arrest is taking someone into custody. Is taking someone into custody. An indictment is a formal a far a formal charge for a crime that that means the case is serious enough to go to trial. An arrest can happen with or without an indictment. Right. So it is extremely important. But the the word was that there will not be any what? Jail time. Jail time. So there it was. It's very important. Mm -hmm. This was spoken, and I didn't see anybody behind bars. I didn't see Donald Trump behind bars. That was spoken almost 24 hours prior to what had happened in Georgia on Elijah stream. You guys heard it on the next day, but that was taped before. So that word of knowledge went out. So it, and it came to pass. The reason why I'm saying this things is because we have to be very careful. Uh, many times we don't know how the law works and we can assume you know, we can assume something, but that's not a good thing. We should never assume, always go down deeper, always go down deeper and, and, and study and know what. Now I understand what God was talking about. I really understand what God was talking about. Mm -hmm. So um, there are people that are saying, is he going to come back? Well, I'm going to tell you something. 
you know, the answer is this. The prophecies was there's going to be two terms. Prophet Kim Kement, and this was way before I knew it. I didn't know that he had prophesied uh, dominance. I didn't know all this. I found this out later. He said two terms, but I didn't. When I learned about Kim Kement's prophecy, after many of people have said it, I didn't hear him say back to back. Right. Yeah, that's right. He didn't. I did not hear him say back to back. And so we're so part of America, you know, America, we automatically assume two terms means back to back. And I I would have assume, assumed it. And I found out that you don't have to do two terms back to back. You can do one and then later on another term. You can win another term. That's actually constitutional. Mm -hmm. Wow. But look at the Lord. We're learning more about God's ways and we're learning more about what's real. I believe without a shadow of a doubt, we are going to see some of the me. I'm telling you right now that we are going to see a situation where the tides are turning. As the Lord downloaded that, he downloaded that to me strongly. My son, the tides are turning. Not that they're about to turn. Not that they will turn. I actually heard the words, the tides are turning. Right. I'm going to bring this photo up. People call it a monk shop, what you can call it. But there have been people that have been comparing Donald Trump's face, and I'm not trying to get on the political kick here, but they have been comparing Donald Trump's face, the recent shot he took, that he looks like an eagle. And so now they're saying, well, that's the face he took in, in Georgia, but he looks like an eagle. And some people have compared that. Well, the reason why I'm saying this is because Many of you know that I gave a word on Elijah's dream regarding the wounded eagle being healed. And I saw that. I saw that. And that, but that eagle represented the United States of America. That it represented the United States of America. You know, um, I'm going to say it. This happened a few days ago. Um, sometimes get links come to you. I don't, you know, I, I don't run off of links. I run off what the Lord tells me. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, Charles, and I want to get this out because Charles said, don't forget it. One of the words I need to release is somebody said uh, there have been people saying that the Statue of Liberty is going to fall. It's going to crash. It's going to be blown up or whatever. It's going to be damaged. And... Um, I'm going to just be honest with you, saints, with the Lord. The Lord did not show me that at all. Um, that the Statue of Liberty is not going anywhere for any time too soon. So maybe this was symbolic. Maybe this was a symbolic vision. Mm -hmm. Okay. But um, it maybe it was a symbolic vision. But I did not see the Statue of Liberty broken up, coming down. Now. I'm not saying that's not the case, but it could be very symbolic, that vision that people are seeing. Charles, can you tell me that the last prophecy that Kim Clement gave regarding the United States before he went home to be with the Lord, the last prophecy he gave, do you remember that oh, regarding our nation? Um. Well, he gave so many, you know, I know uh, 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 to say the last one, um, it was almost like every every time he hit that stage, you know, he you know, he was prophesying to the United States and also to uh, nations upon this earth. So, um, you know, there's you know, there's just so many. One of the things that he did say in 2014 that I can say is that this nation, he says that the fortunes of Zion were going to be returned.
But first and foremost, he said there was a veil that was placed upon this nation for a time. And the Lord said, I did it. The Lord said, I placed this veil upon this nation. Why? Because in times of darkness and stress, faith rises. And I need my, pay, uh, my people to be people of faith in these last days. Because mm. it's going to take faith to get you across the other side. It's not going to take an individual with a staff raising up saying, now we can cross the Jordan. No, I mean the Red Sea. No, he is saying that it's going to take faith in all of us to step in to why you are here, what you are here to do, and where you are going. And he needs his people to be faithful. That's what mm -hmm. he needs. And so that's one of the words that he gave. He said, I placed this veil up over, uh, uh, you know, over this nation. Why? Because I need faith to arise in my church. Another thing that he said about the church is in one of these prophetic utterances about uh, uh, Donald Trump. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and as a matter of fact, that word that I quoted from 2014, that was actually the date was February 22nd, 2014. Uh, it, it, that, that whole prophecy was not only about number 45, but it was also about the United States. It was about the uh, Supreme Court. It was about the church. It was about Satan trying to put a witch into the White House. And, and all of those things, it was such a power-packed uh, uh, prophetic utterance. He was just on a flow that particular day. And uh, But, you know, he speaks about the church coming into unity. God is saying that he needs his church to be in unity in, these, in, in this time. In these moments right now, where we are right now in this country, on this day, what time is it? It is in my time zone, it's 428 p.m. Right now, God is saying, I need my church to be unified. I need my church to be unified. Why? Because of what he is about to do as far as this harvest. Because all of this that has happened, everything that has brought that has brought us to this point, everyone, is because of the harvest. It's a good thing. Yeah, 2020 and what went down in 2020, yes, is bad. But God is saying, like he said through his servant James, count it all joy when all of this persecution, all of this stuff is going on. Count it as joy because this is building patience up in you. Why? Because patience got to get to a point of perfection. Because when that patience get to that point of perfection, that's going to fuel your faith. And guess what, man? When you're walking in the fullness of faith and patience, man, that's when you truly begin to operate in the supernatural. And the things of this world can't and will not touch you and stop you. That's why all of this stuff had to happen so that we in his uh, 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 church can unify so that we can reap this glorious, glorious harvest. Mm -hmm. It's so much, man. I, I mean, there is, it's, you know, you, you, so you, you, you said something very powerful and I believe the viewers would like to for you to touch on that. You said Kim Kement said, a witch in the White House are trying to put a witch in the White House. Yeah, the devil w w will try to put a witch into the White House. Mm. Yeah, he said that, that that was February 22nd, 2014. Uh, let, uh, let me see if I can find that word so I can read it to you. Because it's, 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 so, uh, it's so important that everyone understand that. Um, how can I search this now, out? Now, people would like to know when you say witch in the White House, does that mean a woman or a man? Because a man could be a witch, but he's called a warlock. Yeah, well, you know, the Bible, you know, really doesn't say anything about warlock ship, but it does okay. say about uh, a warlock craft or anything like that. But he, but he does say witchcraft, right? So yes. it doesn't matter. It's, you know, God, God doesn't separate. You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, okay. yeah, yeah. All right. It okay. could be, it, it could be both ways, you know. Uh, but uh, that that word is from February twenty second, 
and um, boom, 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 man. I'm going to have to search that word out because it is it's such a powerful word. But, um, yeah, he, he said that that we, we have to pray because the devil will try everything in his power to put a witch into the White House. And, mm -hmm. and that was in 2014. And it, without a doubt, God was speaking about, okay, first and foremost, now we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but God deals in the spirit. And there are those that, I call it collateral damage, man. They've hooked themselves up to certain things and they have become one with that thing. They become collateral damage. God was saying no witchcraft will go into the White House in 2016. Amen. Amen. And that's exactly what took place. That uh, 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 Madam President never happened. It never happened. And okay, it wasn't so, supposed to. Amen. So you're saying that time has come and gone. No. I don't think so. I All think right. the devil is still trying to put a witch into the White House. Right mm -hmm. now, you know, uh, 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 you know, what we have in the White House now is a double-minded man. We have a double-minded you know, individual. That's a prophetic utterance that came forth in 2008. We were in the uh, Pacific Northwest. When God said through the prophet, now they shall say we have two presidents. Mm. What does that mean, they asked. And then God said, how can one with a double mind stand before the people? But they shall say we will have two presidents. But God says, I will correct it. And so that was a word that came back in, in 2008 about the times that we are living in right now. And if you look, we, we surely have two presidents. Now, the system has been rigged and how things have gone down. They said that number, then, you know, they said that this double-minded man is the president. But no, uh-uh. I want you guys to listen to this word. I want you to listen to this. This is something that uh, is it, so beautiful, Dr. Manuel, about the prophetic utterance and, and especially how God used Kim. Because Kim, you know, the Bible is a, is a book of codes. It's a book of right. numbers. Right. It really is. It's a book of codes. And so God used Prophet Kim in such a beautiful way when he released the prophetic utterances. Okay. The date, the year. It is very interesting. You see, it was in 1998 that the prophet first heard. He was one of the only prophets that I know of in 1998 that said that America would elect her first black president in the new millennium. Now, he said African-American. I, I don't use that term because I don't consider myself an African-American. I remember when Kim first said that that night, he said the first African-American. And, you know, of course, we were joking back in the pastor's office back in 1998 when he released it. And I said, Kim, do you have your uh, citizenship? And he said, yes. And, and I said, so you are a U.S. citizen? Yes. And do you still have your South African citizenship? And he said, well, yes. I said, well, you're an African-American. I'm yes. an American black man. You were right. born in Africa, and now you have American citizenship. You're an African American. Myself, I'm an American black man. Okay? And he cracked up, you know, so I, I said that to him. But it, it was in 1998 that he prophesied the first black uh, 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 president in the United States in the new millennium. Well, exactly 10 years later, in 2008, mm. President Barack Obama was sworn in as the 44th president of the United States. But check this out, okay? Check this out. So now, let's fast forward from 1998, okay, to 2007. 2007, okay, almost, almost t uh, 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 10 years later, okay? Mm. All right, so let's go from 98 to 2007. Prophet Kim began to prophesy about number 45. And what is interesting about number 45 as opposed to number 44 is that he never called number 44 by name. But he called number 45. Really? 
Huh? No, he never said that Barack Obama would be the president of the United States or Obama would do this. Obama would do that before he became the president. God never declared that. But with number 45, with Trump, the first three times God spoke about uh, uh, Donald Trump. Now, in 2007, God spoke five times in that wow. year about number 45 being the president of the United States, everyone, five times. That number five, of course, we know what that means, favor and grace. But in 2007, God spoke five times, and the third time, on, uh, on the third prophecy, no, the fourth prophecy, I'm sorry, the fourth prophecy is when he called him by name. So there's a difference between these two men, 98 to 2008, Barack Obama took office, but from 2007 to 2017, Trump took office. The difference between the two is this. He didn't call Obama by name, but he called Trump by name. And it was very clear that he was prophesying about number 45 because in 1998, he only prophesied about the first black president two or three times. I, I, I can't find any more of, uh, of uh, uh, you know, prophecies that he was speaking about a black president. Now he's talking about- this, this was 1998. 1998 was the first time that Prophet Kim prophesied about a black and president. And he United said States. it would be in the millennial. The Trump. new millennium, yeah, within the new millennium. And of course the new millennium was, okay, 2000. And it was 10 years later that he became the president. In 2007, he said that Trump will become the president. Well, basically, he said Trump shall become a trumpet. Trump will do this and Trump. So I'm going to play this word, okay? And I, I'm going to play this for you know for your audience right now. Mm. And uh, and this right here is going to bless you because this right here was the last time. Now you know, like I said, he spoke five times. He started in January, on on January 26 of 2007. We were in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And then about two and a half, three weeks later, we're in Maricopa County, Phoenix, Arizona. And he spoke twice about uh, the, uh, this man with hot blood, this man who will raise the walls of protection across this nation. And the economy will shift very quickly. And, and with the, you know, that is clearly speaking about number 45. And then uh, um, uh, the, uh, the fourth time that he spoke about the president, okay, was in Bethel. At Bethel, there at uh, Bill Johnson's church, when he said Trump shall become a trumpet. And then the fourth time was this one. We were in San Jose. And check the date. June 17th, 2007. Very interesting. Do you see? Can Let you me see get that? that again. So he, two, okay, okay. What date is this now? I'm, I'm about to play uh, the one that I want uh, your, your, your audience to hear. It's okay. the one from June 17th, 2007. As okay. you can see, he, he's speaking okay. about Trump right here. Okay, can you see it? Yeah, they need to put that on the screen. June June 17th, right? Yeah, it's coming up. So let me know when it's... 2007. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we need to put that up. We need to put that on the screen. Uh, they need to see that date. Uh, prophecy. Okay, great. All righty, let's... Um, Bring this up here. Wow. Okay, here we go. Now, as you can see, that's February 10th, 2007. He was speaking about uh, uh, President Donald Trump. I will put in your office and then I will baptize him with the Holy Spirit and my power, says the Lord. But listen to this one. And my power, says the Lord of hosts. Now God says a president that I will bring into the White House. And they will say he is ungodly. He does not know God. But ah, ah, even as Jesus disguised himself for the great feast, so I have disguised this man's heart. And when he comes to the White House, not only shall he be mine, but he shall pray as a man that has never prayed in the White House. Is anybody excited about this? That same man, that same man says the Spirit of God shall put his feet onto this platform and God says, they will say, how did this take place? Laws shall change. Young men and young women shall have access 
into the kingdom and with authority into politics and with authority into the industries that now have been controlled by darkness because of this man that shall rule for another two terms for two terms God said do not fear for the Lord says there will be no unnecessary unnecessary stuff but there will be things that men shall question fear not for you shall sit in that seat and suddenly my spirit shall come upon him and baptize him with a fire and with anointing says the spirit of the Lord come on no more war no more war no more war Time of war has gone. Peace shall reign the streets as they have, but not like before. Listen to me. The time of war has gone. The time for peace has come. I will walk in your streets again. And the house they call white shall receive a man. Guys, that, that, that prophecy in itself sums up so much of what is happening right now. Let me just, I wrote some of this down, doctor, and, I, and, I, and I'll go over this real quickly. First and foremost, he, he prophesied a man that, that they will say he is ungodly. How many times have you heard that so many people in the church, okay, in the church, that have been bamboozled by the prophets of Baal. The prophets of Baal is the modern day media, without a doubt. It's the media. They are the prophets of doom, the prophets of Baal. They have demonized this man from one end of the country to the next. They've called him racist when he wasn't a racist. They called him, uh, uh, you know, they called him a liar and, and, and all of these different things to where they got so many people believe in this. But he is the one that stood for righteousness okay so they've demonized this man but then okay uh uh uh, uh they, they 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 trying to say that he wasn't a man that could be saved i remember one time when donald trump made the uh, he made the confession on international tv when a person said you are the most popular person you know on the planet you know that he said no 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 not me i'm not the most popular person on the the planet jesus is he's the one i work for he's the most popular person on the planet that's a confession of christ of who christ is and then he made another confession internationally he said i am no longer of the presbyterian denomination i am now of the non-denominational okay believers i am a non-denominational believer so he made the confession internationally that he follows Christ. 
And I had so many people when I gave that shout out and said, man, our president is one of the first presidents that is truly confessing Christ in front of people. I had so many people inbox me, email me saying, Charlie, you don't know what you're talking about. God will never use this man. This man is playing you. This man is not saved. God wouldn't save a man like that. I couldn't believe someone said that. God wouldn't save. I said, oh my goodness, how much hatred can be in the heart of one that says that they are a believer. To say that God, who himself came down and said that whoever called upon my name, whoever, he didn't, say, he didn't give no conditions. He said, whoever called upon my name shall be saved. And so I couldn't believe that that person said that. So that first word when he says they would say he's ungodly, that by third proves that this, you know, that prophecy was genuine. And then he goes on and said, laws shall be changed. He said, young people, young men and young women shall access corporations, offices, political places. That is coming very soon. But then he said, for another two terms, for two terms. So he said, for two terms and another two terms, which to me is a code. We don't know what that means, but I know that wasn't a slip of tongue. God was saying something very interesting there. And then he said, peace shall reign again, not like before, okay, but not like before. There's a peace that passes all understanding mm -hmm. that is coming, everybody. Now, that has nothing to do with a man, but it has everything to do with the faith of you and I, his ecclesia, so that we can be in tune with him to recognize that peace. And then he spoke about a man that will fight in our night, that he will be a knight for this country. How many times have this man fought for this, uh, uh, you know, for this country? How many times? Guys, I can go on and on, but that prophetic utterance in itself is one of the most powerful ones because it was the last prophecy of 2007 that the Lord spoke about number 45 and it solidified what God is doing. Everything that has happened, God allowed it. The, the, the shake up in 2020, when many people call prophets like myself, I know you've been called a false prophet. I know they call my mentor a false prophet hundreds of times when they said he missed it because he didn't get elected the second time. I'm sorry, YouTube. I'm sorry, Facebook. I'm sorry, Instagram. I'm sorry, TikTok. I'm sorry, Twitter. But that was a farce that went down in 2020. He was elected. It was stolen. But you know what, I'm going to tell you something. I, I want to tell you, saints, the, the, you know, we, there's a lot of prophecies and sometimes we can forget. But I want to make it clear. I want to ask the saints again to put up today's date. I don't have my clock up here. I want, because I want them to see this, because this has to be said. I'm going to release this again. Because people tend to forget because, you know, they're fault, you know, there's different prophecies and then they, you know, the last one they may have not, you know, forgot that uh, this was said. Brooks, thank you. I'm going to go to uh, Brooks is going to bring that up. Look, I'm going to say this again. And it was extremely important that we see this. So this was August 23rd, 2023. Thank you. And thank you. Everyone is putting it up there. My servant Trump, this was the Lord, he used the word, my servant Trump will not be stopped. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. That means that's, that means that means God's hand is behind him. My servant Trump will not be stopped. I have anointed him and appointed him for such a time as this. Although there will be what? Trials. I those although there will be trials so that means there were court dates it's important that people we hear this although there will be trials the lord made it very clear to the enemies of the lord i will put you on trials what a man saw it so he reap then the last thing the lord gave me on this on August 23rd, 2023, he says, my servant 
will, not if or should, he will be vindicated. That was powerful. Yeah. He will be vindicated. I am saying this again because these were the words of our Lord. And the Lord made it very clear. So things did happen in 2022, but God wasn't finished. God used it for a greater purpose. That's right. A much greater purpose than you and I can even imagine. Amen. Now, I want you to put it on there. What was said, Trump will, Donald Trump will be vindicated because I want to put it up there on the comments to make sure there is no misunderstanding no misunderstanding because uh, a lot of prophecies are going out and then when we see in the natural we're like uh oh that didn't happen no they missed you know we got us not you know lean to our own understanding somebody put it up there that trump will be vindicated there we go there we go all right that's important I want to make sure, and I'm doing this so we can have more clarity. We want, I want, you know, oh, Leslie just put it up. Great. Well, I want clarity. These, I, I can't do it. I can't vindicate. Mm -hmm. God can, though. But there's no one that can vindicate you the way God can vindicate you. We're seeing, and, and it's not about, and, and, you know, Charles, we know this. It's not about Trump, okay? Yes. It's not about, we, we have to understand that. It's not about that. It's what God is doing. God is using him. He's using me. He's using Charles. He's using you. He's using many saints that are known and unknown as a vessel, as a vessel. And I want to make it clear, you're going to start seeing a major pop. I mean, right now he's popular, but you haven't seen nothing yet. You haven't seen nothing yet. I'm saying it with Charles right here because I want him to hear it. And I want him to see it. Okay. His wife, I'm going to say it again. It was powerful. She is going to start to get involved. She is going to start to get involved. I don't know what she's going to say or do or how God's going to bring her in, but you're going to start to see a lot more of, of Mrs. Trump getting involved and the popularity of Trump is going to go to an all time high. An all time high. It's important. It's going to go to an all time high. It's yeah. like God is going to start dealing with her, you know, in this uh, political platform. And she's like, you know what? That's it. I'm going to stand right. next to my husband. I'm going to help. And I saw that. I saw that. And it just, I mean, this thing went, it went viral because all of a sudden things that we didn't see in her in the first election, you're seeing her in the second one. Whoa, glory to God. I feel right. the power of the Holy Ghost by speaking that. <laughs> so there is a shift coming. The tides are turning. Amen. Historic kaboom setback before the elections. I don't know what that is, but the Lord said it. I said this before. I want to make it clear. It was a, I heard a historic kaboom setback for the enemy, for the enemy, the enemies of the Lord. So um, I'm sure looking forward to that. I am sure looking forward to that. Amen. So, and he can't, and why the reason why God is doing something wonderful. He wants our, he, he, the nation that you saw is shifting. The plans of the enemy are not going to, what they, what in, in their eyes, prosper to the way they think. Right. You and I are in the position in this generation, make a difference. Um, one of the things that I need to tell, please pray for yourself, over yourself. Pray for your church that you're under, your family, your friends. But I'm asking you to throw a little extra prayer out there for the Trump family. That pray for their family, okay? Because... This is something the enemy loves to do. Right. You know, if, if, if he can't bring the person he's trying to bring down, he goes against the family. 
when King Saul tried to bring David down, and and Brother Charles, you know this, yeah. then, you know, all of a sudden, uh, David knew that his family was in jeopardy, and he hid his parents. The Bible made it very, it shows it, that he hid his parents, um, you know, um, Ruth was a Moabite. He hid his 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 his, his parents at, at, in the Moabite uh, uh, community mm -hmm. for a time, because Saul would, was going to go after them, and and the rest, some of, most of his family, and then his brothers. I think they were you know roaring with him uh, in the wilderness. But uh, this happens. So uh, even in Revelation, uh, when the enemy couldn't get the Jews, the Bible said that he went off. He went to the offspring. Who was that? The Christians. That's so. It. Uh, pray for his family and uh, that we are going to get through this. Okay. Now, I know people are saying it's a massive exodus taking place, but the exodus that I saw, I want to make it very clear. The exodus that I saw is that it was getting, it was during the time where they was getting so close to elections and then also during the elections. And when the enemy saw that they were not, it, things were not going their way, that I saw a massive amount of, of resigning i uh, mass of uh, resigning so um now you know it's like oh this ain't gonna happen oh, this is not uh oh uh oh uh oh well, well it's not the plans i'm working i'm getting i'm getting out of here i'm getting i'm gonna leave so get ready and i did say that on the previous prophecy but i many times we're like forgetting things i said wait a minute so i get we're gonna have to really make this clear god has got this saints he has got this you see, I want the Lord to always have his way. Amen. There are going to be some bye-byes, but it's not going to be the people that you think. It will, you know, God is moving and shifting. Amen. I had a vision, August 23rd, and I'm telling you, it wasn't pretty, Brother George. It was the White House. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say this very clearly. I know people are saying there's nothing happening in the White House. Nobody. I saw Biden in the White House, but he wasn't doing good. He was not doing good. So that's, I made it, I saw that. So I don't know, um, he just wasn't doing good at all. And I know it's been said that there is uh, two Bidens and three, and there's all that, and the one that's in is not in. That, but what I saw, that was Biden. Okay. That was Biden. Now, he may have a, uh, he may have a duplicate. He may have a, a second person that looks like him. But what the Lord showed me, that that was, that was the one. Right. Now what, what's going to, you know, so if he, so I'm not saying that there's not a duplicate. I'm not saying that, you know, other, other, you know, I'm not saying what I'm saying with the one I saw was Biden and he's definitely alive, but he wasn't doing well. He wasn't doing well. He wasn't doing well at all. all right. So, um, and then the, 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 the vision lifted and I said, okay, so there might be some imposters but uh and but it was there the, you know he's he's still there he's not dead he's not buried yet but uh and i'm not wishing anything on the, all of that that is between god and them i am not going to because because i have to pray for salvation that's right that's what i was gonna say you know one yeah. of the things that god has directed me to do is to pray for their eternal souls because yeah. God is about to really come up on the scene and he's already he's already started and and so it it is not God's will for any man any to go man to hell. Cares. Yeah. Yes. For any man. So, so 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 we have to um be careful to not let our emotions to make wrong biblical decisions. And so um, are there fake people in different places? Absolutely. Absolutely. But I'm going to leave that to the Lord. Amen. I'm going to leave it. And I believe he showed me this picture. I didn't ask. 
believe me, I didn't believe me because I don't look and I, I know I don't deal with him. But when he shows you this, it's obviously then God is saying something here. Right. You know, is God happy about what's happening? Absolutely. He's not happy at all. Is God going to do something about it? Yes, but he's going to do it his way, his way. You know, he's not allowing us to, to sit there. Now, I know there's been there's been said uh, there's angels in, in position. That is true. I've seen it myself. There are angels in position. I've seen it myself. Yes, that is so true. They are so true. Are they going to bring about some serious judgment? Yes. These were hosts of heaven. These were definitely host of heaven position in the United States. I saw that much more than once. Is judgment come? Yeah, yeah. How, how is God going to do it? I don't know. But he's going to do it. They were around Elijah. And Elijah, you know, when the enemies came, he said, Lord, blind up. So that was the, that was the command. So, but I want to be on, under God's grace, not judgment. You know, so people better repent. People better repent. People better repent because God, it is the tides are turning. The Amen. tides are turning. And so we, we, we're, we're going to see some things. And, and um, um, But I'm excited because I am a part of the move of God, not the rebellion of God, you know, against God, but the mm -hmm. move of God. What, you know, I'm going to pull it down. So, Charles, what has God told you about what's coming up the next few months? Because people are talking about September. They're talking about something. We're only a few days away. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about something very significant. And I know you have the, 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 a lot of Jewish uh, um, holy days that are coming up. Right. But there are people that are talking, even the prophets, talking about something powerful coming in the month of September. Has the Lord given you anything? Well, the thing that he's he's shown me is to prepare everyone for what is coming and uh, to be in a position of uh, prayer, to be prayed mm -hmm. up uh, and really don't walk in fear because I keep, you know, this is something that God, you know, and you've probably heard me say this before, but God really wants our minds to be renewed because there's so much negative Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, information that is in the airways. You know, the Bible yeah, says right. that the devil that's is right. the prince of the power of the air. I mean, he 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 thinks that he has that position, and so this the the media and and, and man have yielded. You know, the media, the power of the air over to him, but we have authority over that. And the one way to combat that is we have to have a renewed mind that we can't be conformed to what the media, what they are saying. We are not to conform to it. And so that's my main thing is, yes, there's a storm coming, but then there's a harvest that, that look guys, that is not only in this world, those that are not saved, but there's a harvest in each and every one of us. You've been faithful. You stood through all that the enemy have brought against you. You have stood this test of time. You've gone through these battles. You've gone through all of this turbulence and everything that you have persevered through. And you are still standing. You have a harvest on the inside of you that we are and you are about to reap. It's a harvest that God wants you to have. Because this is truly harvest time. You see, September speaks of harvest time. You know, we've gone into the fall. I believe that there's a harvest coming to the people of God. That we've been prepared for this that the enemy is trying to thrust against us. Because whatever the enemy is trying to do, God is going to raise that standard up against it. And that standard is you and I and this that he has given unto us. And it's time mm. for us to reap this so that we know that we have it so that we can go through whatever it is that the enemy is trying to thrust at us. I, I, I heard as you were talking, saying, I'm going to tell you something. Wow. I, I heard, and this, this, is, this is not the first time, 
as you know, I heard the words push back, push Come back, on. push back. You know, um, whatever the enemy's trying to do these next few months, lockdown, mask, fear, I heard the word, I am releasing my angels. They will be a pushback, which means it's not going to prosper. No. It is it's not, not going, to going to prosper, saints. So don't fear. Don't fear God. There's something. It's a, I see a push, a fierce pushback in the heavenlies. A Amen. fierce pushback. So there is a warfare going on right now in the spiritual realm. But we are winning. One is a thousand, two is ten thousand. Mm -hmm. So whatever the attempt will not prosper. No. There will always be people that's going to fall under fear. But not you. Not you. Amen. Not me. Be strong. The people that need to be afraid is the enemies of the Lord. They will be running. They will be running. Amen. Because God is going to move on this. So I'm telling you now, push back Come on. from the hand of God. God is going to push back the enemy's plans. Woo. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, I, in, I, but we I, are I, in complete agreement because that's, mm. you know, that I know that there is, we have this on the inside of us. It's time for us to reap this harvest and we have what it takes Amen. to tell that devil that we can go straight through this. Nothing will stop the advancing of the kingdom of God. It has begun and it's time for it to truly, truly manifest upon the earth. So anyway, yes. Mm. Amen. Saints. Do I'm always I'm I'm gonna always be there and I'm, and I'm gonna ask you to partner with our ministry and partner with us to to make a difference, especially here in California, especially here in California. Amen. We have a homeless problem, and we need your help. We need your help, and I'm praying. If you haven't done it, I pray that you will do it now. I pray you will consider to sow. And so into our ministry that we can move on this and do much more. There's a lot to do. And I want, I, I'm praying that the Lord will touch your heart when you see this clip. California is a perfect place, true golden state. People across the world come to Los Angeles, renowned for its beautiful coastline. From Hollywood to Venice to Silver Lake to Koreatown. The best weather, the most creative people, a place to raise our families. And yet, the Los Angeles we know is dying right before our eyes. We have this Achilles heel, homelessness. Just as famous now as the Hollywood sign in the hills. The city we love, now a national laughing stock. A division of haves and have nots, the wealthiest homes in the entire country. And just blocks away, people under bridges intense, drug addicted, unable to care for themselves, parents, children, lifelong workers, teachers, veterans. It's a national tragedy, our tragedy, and it's got to stop. Saints, I'm asking God would touch your hearts. Many people, that's the only way that we can let you know how serious this problem is in our state and in other states. But California is number one. The Lord said, when I was hungry, you fed me. Come on. 
When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was incarcerated, you visit me. The Lord tells us and gives a special promise for those that remember the poor. Mm -hmm. Saints, they don't have hope. But when we visit them, when we help them off the streets, when we clothe them, feed them, and shelter them, and give them the gospel, there is hope now. They have hope. And I'm asking you to partner with our ministry. Some of you can partner weekly, monthly. And I will not stop this because you and I are going to hear those wonderful words. Well done. Well done. Well done. Amen. And I, I, I feel good because I feel good. I sleep well at night because I know what we're doing and what you saints are helping us do. I feel good about that. And I know God is pleased with all of us. So I'm asking you to take that time and partner with our ministry and help us make a difference. That could have been you. That could have been me. That could have been our family. That could have been someone you know. It could have been someone maybe you don't know. But the fact is, they're still our brethren. So I'm asking you to partner with our ministry. I'm asking you to do it right now. I'm asking you to let the Lord touch your heart. You can do it right now. We have different ways through PayPal, you know, Cash App, Venmo, um, uh, and other ways. You just go on our, our, our ministry uh, website. But thank you so much because I do not want to let them down because they are calling for our help and we won't stop. And we're not talking a couple of people. We're talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, all ages, black, white, male, female, young, old. Poverty has no precedence. All right, come on. And I, and I'm, I, listen, you are partnering with the Lord. You're partnering with our ministry. You're partnering with us. And I want to thank you. Even do our travels. I make time for that. I make sure that this, that part of our ministry is taken care of. And I want to thank you, saints, for those that have done it. I want to thank you. You don't know. I, I, I would love to release your names, but I want you to get all the credit from the Lord. I want you to get all the credit from God. Amen. You know, I'm not, I don't say, oh, so-and-so sent this much. So, no, you know what? I want your credit to be in heaven. I want you to get the full blessings. So, But I'm going to thank you right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, many of you are asking where we're going to be uh, at certain times. So um, we're going to be, I'm going to be with Nathan next week. Hope you can make it. I'll be with Nathan France next week in Arizona. You don't want to miss that. Come on, go there. It's a free conference. If you're in the Arizona area, you want to see it. I mean, Nathan, I mean, my God, uh, man, when we work together, we're just, man, we're just a handful. We <laughs> oh, glory to God. And this, and this Sunday, I uh, just listen, believe for your healing, believe for your breakthrough. Come on down. We want to see you, meet you. We're going to be in Torrance. That's right, California. So that's part of that. We want to see you there, saints. Glory to God. We're going to be a part of that. You know, only a few days away, you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. And, and uh, saints, I'm going to come back in a, in a few days to release more. And I want to tell uh charlie how can they charles how can they connect with you uh oh sorry i I, I muted myself because my grandkids was going by the door and they was being kind of loud i didn't want that that to disturb you but yeah uh they can um they can contact me at my my website it's it's just www.charliejordan.com and I'm revamping that. And, uh, and uh, of course, you know, I have my Truth, Truth Social page. Uh, it's uh, Charlie Jordan at BTL, the number four, and then Jesus. So it's... Okay. And where's this one here? This is? CharlieJordan.com. That's my website. Okay, good, good, good. Right. And then my Truth Social is Charlie uh, Jordan at... BTL, that stands for Base the Lord, BTL, the number four, Jesus. So it's BTL mm. for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
well, you know, this is really good. And you, you've been traveling. Uh, somebody, I think somebody is mentioning, um, okay. Uh, we, well, I'm going to be on a cruise with Donna in the end of next month. But uh, Saints, and so that we're looking for for that. And as that comes up, you know, we may do a little bit more advertising. Right? It's going to be glorious. Charles, thank you for being a part of Behind the Scenes. I truly yeah. believe uh, words were spoken that the saints of God was blessed. And continue to pray for those that are in Florida. You yes. know, um, we have friends. We have friends in Florida. They're telling me everything is great with them. The, the, they have not been affected. But that doesn't mean no one else has. So right. keep praying for them on this. All right, please. Um, it, um, so I don't know. Uh, is the um, I was told that the the saints, you know, I was told that the it was sold out. But everybody from Florida, where are you? Come on, come on, come on, bring you up here from Florida and let us know what's going on. All righty, who's in Florida right now? We got a lot of people on the live stream. Who's in Florida right now? That you know that uh, we you know we can reach out and pray. You know, come on, saints. Is there any Florida here? I think, oh, there it is. Helen, so guys, keep Helen in prayer. And she, had, if he yep. has any family, keep her in prayer in Florida. You know, God watching over her. Any any more, we have any more Floridas uh, watching us right now. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, any of us in Florida. Okay, look at that. All right, I'm perfect. All righty, you guys, keep, keep, keep Walker in prayer. You know, I keep her family in prayer. Anyone that's in Florida, well, I mean, we keep all of us in prayer, but we just want to let the people know in Florida that we love them, we appreciate them, and our and our prayers and thoughts are going out to them, those that we know and those that we don't know. Hallelujah. Saints of blue. Oh, good. That's one that said, okay, great. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So it's important, saints, those that we're bringing up here right now, you know, there we go. Okay, they're coming on. They're coming on. Yep, Hallelujah. I see. I see yeah, yeah. Yes. I had um I had um actually I had text um uh cat cat Kerr, you know, I said, you know, because we were praying for Cat Kerr, Florida and Jacksonville, Florida. Mm -hmm. And uh so Cat Kerr texted me back and said, you know, I'm not in Florida right now, I'm on the cruise. <laughs> 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 you know, and she said she had a great time. So uh, I'm looking forward to all that. Amen. But saints, let me tell you something. The best is yet to come. Don't you give up. You don't give up. You stand up and you thank God for what he's doing because Amen. the best is yet to come. God, Lord, we just release, uh, we just release the, a flow of blessings. Go ahead, uh, uh, Brother Charles, just pray with me. Okay. We just really release a flow of blessings on the people right now. Yes. Yes. I want you to be a receiver, saints. Yes. There's going to be a major pushback in these next few months. What the enemy meant for bad, God's going to turn it in for good. We're, yes. going, we're, we're already we're, we're going to stand and we're going to see the glory of God. We're going to see the salvation of God. This is great. The glory of God. Every person here is Lord. Let your presence fall on them. Let your presence fall on them. Hallelujah. Father, we give you the glory. We give you the praise right now. I thank you, Father. Every person here. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're doing in our country, in our lives, and, and, and what you're doing in our political platform. Thank you for what you're doing around the world. There's people that are watching us from different countries. We speak blessings over them and over their nation. Come on, people, say it together with me. Lord, remember the United States. Yes. Remember your covenant, Lord. Yes. Remember my family. Come on. Come on. Come Don't on. remember my family, Lord. In Jesus' name, remember me, Father. That the promises of God is overtake you, you yes. wonderful saints. Let the promises of God overtake you. In Jesus' mighty name. Yes. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll see you guys in a few days. Remember, when the devil has a plot, God has a plan. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Love you guys. The good news is that the bad news didn't work out.